Oahu. Hawaii's most populous island is home to a third of the state's best surf spots. Among them are the legendary white sands of Waikiki Beach. This stretch of shore attracts more than 70,000 visitors a day. And rising majestically above the waterfront is an ornate tribute to wealth, leisure, and recreation. It's a coral pink stucco complex that raises out of a tropical garden. It sets on 10 acres of prime Waikiki beachfront. And it looks like this beautiful Spanish palace coming out from the ground. This is the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. Built in 1927, it is one of the state's oldest and grandest resorts. But as local historian Kalani Souza can attest, the dazzling edifice was also at the center of a masterful hoax that left the nation stunned. This is a story of a little guy really sticking it to the man. Nineteen sixty-two, Oahu. Hotels are springing up all along the prized Waikiki shore. Hawaiian locals watch as their beachfronts are transformed, but it's the large hotel corporations that reap most of the benefits. And it seems one group of hoteliers is about to get even richer. In May, the owners of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel are summoned to a meeting by three guests staying in their most lavish suite. The guests, two men and a woman, would like to discuss a business proposition. The younger man introduces himself as D. Franklin Carson and says he represents a Swiss investment company with an impressive array of clients. Carson tells him that his company represents the king of Saudi Arabia, the president of Egypt, some large companies in London, Hong Kong, and Singapore. His older partner, who goes by the name Albert Wilcox, then makes an astonishing offer. He declares that for the Royal Hawaiian and the chain's other Waikiki properties, his syndicate will pay a sum of $35 million. This will be the largest real estate deal in Hawaiian history. The executives who purchased the properties just three years earlier for a mere $18 million see a deal they can't refuse. They're about to become filthy rich. As the hotel executives begin to negotiate the sale, news of the record-breaking offer spreads across the country. It explodes in the press. It goes nationwide. Time, Newsweek magazine, Wall Street Journal. Although no money has yet changed hands, the celebrations begin. And the trio of investors is treated to an extended stay in their lavish suite. Whatever they wanted, they could get. So they start racking up a bunch of hotel charges, living large. Finally, the hotel owners call Wilcox to close the deal. They send him and his assistant to New York to finalize the paperwork. What they don't know is that the three deal makers are not who they seem. It's 1962 in Honolulu, Hawaii. Three investors have approached the owners of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel with a stunning offer. $35 million for properties worth half that price. Now they're on their way to New York to close the deal. But the potential hotel buyers are not who they seem. While en route to the East Coast, the businessman calling himself Albert Wilcox is detained by police at Seattle's airport for trying to pass two bad checks drawn on the accounts of the supposed Swiss investors. Then Wilcox confesses. The whole multi-million dollar hotel offer is an elaborate hoax. And he is, in fact, Hawaiian conman extraordinaire Sammy Amalu. Sammy Amalu is very talented with his impeccable smile. He knew how to talk people into having it go his way. Amalu recruited his fiancée to pose as his real estate agent, while he himself took on the part of investor Albert Wilcox. He dresses in an expensive suit. 
and starts greasing his hair back. He puts on a dark pair of sunglasses and he talks through the British accent. His partner, D. Franklin Carson, was no Swiss investor. He was a 19-year-old surfer from California who Amalu had randomly picked up at the airport. To help him with the deal, Sammy offered Carson an all-expense-paid summer in Hawaii. And of course, being a 19-year-old California surfer, he said yes. Sammy Amalu transformed the surfer into a powerful business executive. He got him an expensive suit, a nice little tie, got him all prepped up to look like he's the representative of the Swiss Financial Trust. It emerges that Amalu's previous scams included successfully impersonating a Hawaiian prince and an Indian Maharaja. But this scam was not really about money. This one, he says, was for Hawaii. Amalu was angry that the real estate boom on Oahu had priced Hawaiian locals out of their homes, leaving them feeling like second-class citizens in their own land. So, to wreak his revenge, he decided to publicly humiliate the hotel barons who were taking over the Waikiki beachfront. He wanted to make them look foolish, thereby giving downtrodden Hawaiians something to cheer about. Though his bad checks end up landing him in prison for seven years, Amalu succeeds in showing his fellow Hawaiians that even local nobodies can bamboozle the big guys at the beach. When the press picks up on the scam, they lap it up. He ingratiated himself with his fellow Hawaiians, and uh, Sammy became a bit of a folklore hero. Today, the Royal Hawaiian remains one of the state's most iconic resorts. Yet this majestic pink palace also endures as a reminder of the swindler who masterminded one of Hawaii's most elaborate practical jokes.